in this lecture we will cover various types of photoelectronic junction devices junction these are pn junction diodes on which and the basic principle on which these three types of junction devices that is photodiode led and solar cell the operate is based on relationship between the photons energy and the energy gap of the semiconductor say silicon it has energy gap of 1.1 electron when photon having more than this energy strikes this semiconductor it excites electron and electron moves from valence band to conduction band and the device these devices generally use the semiconductors in the range of 1.1 or 1 electron volt to 3 electron volt it varies from device to device this what i am saying is for led now let us first take how, how photodiode really functions what are the principles on which it operates photodiode is basically a junction diode which has an opening this depletion region has an opening which allows photon which allows photon to reach the depletion region i am redrawing it this is the diode this is the depletion region this is the junction boundary and there is window for photodiode to reach the depletion region as we know if this is p side this is n side this will the junction here it will have positive charge because of the diffusion and negative here in the depletion region and there is a electric field due to this charge now the photodiode is operated in reverse bias where p is connected to negative and n is connected to positive because of the reverse bias operation of the diode we have current due to the minority carrier this is the forward bias region and this is the reverse bias region of the diode this is the voltage this is the reverse voltage this is current in forward current we show by milliamperes and reverse in by microampere so when a photodiode when when a photodiode receives a photon in the depletion region electron and hole pairs are generated these electron and hole pairs are separated uh, they move across the junction boundary because electric field is in this direction and we have further given higher potential to n side because of this electric field the holes will cross over to this side holes will move here and electrons will cross over to this side the holes are minority here holes are minority here so the minority carriers they cross and they reach the other side of the junction boundary and the minority which is electron is minority in p side they also cross because of the electric field they move opposite to electric field so in the reverse bias please keep it in mind that current is always because of the minority carriers not due to majority carriers now the question arises why should we operate photodiode in reverse bias why not in the forward bias the reason is that the reason is that let us take p side in p side you have 
holes are much more than the electrons the holes are in majority electrons in minority let us take the p side of the depletion region now when a photon falls there is generation of delta h and delta e both electron and hole pairs holes increase by delta h electron also increase by delta e and this pair generation is equal means delta h is equal to delta e if we write delta h upon h delta h upon h is much much less as compared to delta e upon e in p side in p side delta h upon h is much less than delta e upon e because h is high than e so when when the photon falls the change delta h upon h the rate of change of the majority carriers is much less as compared to the minority carriers this rate of change is more and in photodiode we want to measure the intensity change sensitivity to the change in intensity not the quantum of current on which we are interested we are interested in the change and change is more with the minority carriers minority carriers gives you more change that is delta upon e is more than delta h upon h and that is why it is operated in the reverse bias same thing you can show for the n side if we take n side then in n side h is much less than e but the delta h is equal to delta e the electron hole pairs so delta h upon h is much greater than delta e upon e in n side this is the minority so change in the minority concentration as compared to the original concentration is much more than the change in the majority concentration as compared to the original concentration and in reverse bias the current is because of the minority because of the minority since the change in concentration of minority carrier is high so it will it will observe greater change we can notice greater change by using the reverse bias when the intensity of the light changes and if we draw the if intensity is increasing then the current is increasing this is i1 i2 and i3 in this direction intensity of light is increasing and this is the current in micro amperes so for function of photodiode is to measure to sense the op uh, optical signals and optical signal means change in the optical signal which is more noticeable when you operate it in reverse bias now let us take the case of light emitting diodes how they function their function is quite simple this is diode this is the junction boundary this is the depletion region this is p side this is n side you will have positive charge accumulating here in the junction boundary and negative here and this is the direction of electric field when you apply forward bias and this is transparent again when you apply forward bias positive and and to negative what happens the holes which are majority here they diffuse they move across because of the forward bias the hole moves from p side to n side now here the holes are minority carriers sorry elect 
the holes are the minority carriers holes are moving holes have crossed the junction similarly electrons move to this side they are majority here but minority here so what happens you have relatively higher concentration of the minority carriers at the junction boundary on both the sides as compared to the concentration at the equilibrium so the equilibrium is disturbed and the high concentration of minority carriers that is the holes which are now in higher concentration on the n side as compared to the holes which are there without any bias these combine with the electron combine with the electron and photon is generated same thing for this side this we can say its injection of the minority carriers during forward bias the minority carriers are injected across the junction boundary and they combine with the majority carriers like electrons which were holes which were the majority here they've crossed they are minority here now n side they are minority here but electrons are majority and these excess holes which have come here combine with these majority carriers so minority carriers which are now in excess combine with the available majority carriers and photon this energy is generated generally we use gallium arsenide and phosphide for light emitting diodes and you can also make infrared light emitting diodes we have to suitably choose the energy level one precaution which has to be kept it it has a ro low reverse bias voltage so if the reverse bias voltage greater than the rated reverse bias voltage is given it gets damaged and with the increase in intensity of light inten sorry with the increase in current which you are applying more intensity is generated up to a point but beyond that point it starts reducing so this was photo this was led uh, the opto electronic device now let us take up the solar cell in solar cell let us take a small example a p wafer say about 300 micrometer is used on this you develop a very thin layer of n type semiconductor of 0.3 micrometer this is n type and this area is kept large and you have metallic plates like this conductors and on this you have a base the p side has base which is also conducted connected to a conductor it is then connected to a resistance what happens how the current is generated when the light falls here when the photon falls three things happen one is generation generation of e and h pairs if you again look at the junction boundary of the diode this is n p side this is n side this is positive positive and this is negative electric field is in this direction when photon falls on it eh pairs are generated because of the electric field and thin junction region depletion boundary the electric field is high and it separates eh pairs so eh pairs before they recombine are separated so holes will go to this side and electrons will go to this side and then they are collected so generation then separation and third is collection you have three stages
collection is the stage where you get the current it is holes are moving in this direction and the direction of movement of holes is to be taken as the direction of the current it is also a reverse because in which you are in this you are having current due to the minority carriers like the holes are crossing over to this side from here holes were minority here and majority here electrons have crossed over to that side electrons were majority or minority on this side they have crossed to the majority side so whenever minority carriers cross over to the majority side it's a drift current which is like a reverse bias but here we draw it like this in the fourth quadrant this is voltage this is current because we are not supplying supplying the voltage we are obtaining the current because of the photon and this is how the diagram is made showing relationship between voltage and current the materials which are more suitable for for, for the solar cell for the solar cell is if you look at the intensity of light and the here you plot the energy gap corresponding at 1.5 eV you have the maximum so the photo so the diodes or semiconductors having the energy gap less than this in this range would absorb more sunlight and generate more current and voltage and for this silicon is is suitable with 1.1 that is why silicon is used and gallium and arsenide is also used it has slightly higher and a band gap of 1.53 but its absorption ratio is much higher is much higher as compared to silicon so it gives a better result some may ask that why don't you use the material with much lower electron volt gap say 0.4 electron volt say pbs because if we we use this with very less electron volt gap most of the sun the sunlight would be absorbed and by the top layer of the solar cell if you recall the diagram there is p layer and then there is n thin n wafer on that and this is the base plate and this was connected to a conductor the sunlight is falling like this if the energy gap is very low most of the sunlight gets absorbed in the top layer and it doesn't reach up to the depletion region where we need the eh pairs to be generated so that the electric field separates the pair and the required voltage and current is generated so this is all about the three important opto electronic devices that is led photodiode and the solar cell Thank you.